Hello and welcome back to my craft room. Well, if you're a regular viewer, you will know that I have been looking at UK based craft subscription boxes. And um, I approached just a few of the ones that really, really appealed to me, the ones that were really singing my tune. <laughs> and some of them came back to me and very kindly said they'd send me a box to try out. Now this one, from the makers. You may have seen me open this about just under a week ago. I will link to the unboxing video because then I sort of talked all about how you how this how their subscription works and had a look at the website and everything, as well as showing you everything that was in the box. Now what the makers, the lovely people at the makers are gonna do, they've sent me this box, which is actually the November one to make a blue whale. You can probably see it there. They're also gonna send me the no, this was the October one. They were also going to send me the November one, which was to make like a cartoon turkey. So coming up to Christmas, which would be really fun. I it's not just Christmas, but also Thanksgiving if you're in America. And they've given me a complimentary year subscription to their kind of smaller subscription box, which is a monthly Makers Flock membership. That has just come in the post now. So I'm going to open this in a separate video. What I've come to do today is to finally, I've been so looking forward to it, itching to get in here, make a start on the um, Blue Whale. The Makers is all about felting. All of these wonderful creations are the brain children of Steffi Stern, the founder of the company. The whole team is, it's a lovely team, all female team, which is quite unusual, but I won't go on about it now because I went on, on I, I told you all about them in the unboxing video. It's Today is all about getting into this activity, but I did also sign up for, they're working in collaboration with the charity called Cats Protection, and who and that charity does a yearly craft along so this year they're collaborating with the makers and Steffi has created this little felted cat so I've signed up for that <laughs> I think it cost me 20 quid at least 10 of that they say will stay with the charity obviously they cover, the rest of it is covering costs so I'm waiting for that little box to arrive in the post I've had the email through and everything and then there's like a craft along video that goes with it and I know a couple of people have commented whether it's here or in the um maybe it was in the discord have said that they've also signed up for that so i'm really interested to see the different all the different cats and i guess they'll probably share there'll be somewhere where you can share your your creations i'm sure you can always share them in our discord and the, and the arty farty any group on on facebook as well if, if you're making the, making these felted cats so anyway never mind cats let's get to my whale so i've been so itching to try this i have done felting before not a massive amount of it but i love it and it's i think like they say it's actually quite beginner friendly really if you've got good instructions nice materials good quality proper wool you know it will give you better results and just be less frustrating especially for a beginner let's get in there and have a look they've just been so they've been such a lovely company to deal with as well and um and i loved everything i loved the packaging it's all very eco-friendly and there wasn't any old plastic uh, packaging to throw away or anything. <laughs> Love the, uh, the whole look of it. So I've left it in the box so I can have the fun of opening it again. I'll get rid of the box now. <laughs> well, I'll get rid of it. I'll, um, I'll just put it out away for a minute. So there's all my instructions and uh, here's the paperwork. Here's the wire I will use to make my kind of arm armature. As it's my, they put this together as if it was my first box of a subscription. And in the first box, they always put your basic felting tools, um, which I think is brilliant. So if you had nothing, you could still, you could still do this. Um, I mean, I have got eco-friendly felting mats as well, and um, multi-needle tools and things. But they do the needles are in here as well. Here are the look at this wool. How beautiful is that? That's really going to help to give that effect of the sort of glistening skin on the on the whale. Pinch of black, as they put it. A little bit of that kind of light blue, more of the kind of royal blue colour. Some of this bleached white. And this is the more sheepy smelling one. <laughs> not, it's not horribly sheepy smelling, it's, but you can you can smell that it's wool. Yeah. And so this is the one that we'll use as the core of the of the beast. And then there's my needles in there. This little packet had all these glassine bags. It had these beads in. 
which I put into this bowl and then threw all over the floor. So I may have lost a few. There may be still <laughs> a few all over the floor, but it'll probably be enough. And I'm sure I've got some more if I need to, if I need more than I've got there. Okay, that's everything in the box. So I'm going to put that out away for a minute. It is a lovely sturdy box to store the project on while I'm working in it. And then I can reuse it as a gift box as well. So I say no, no plastic packaging or anything like that, which is definitely singing my tune. So now we get to actually start. <laughs> and there are lots of tutorials on their YouTube channel as well. I will, I link to their website and the, and the, uh, the YouTube channel. In the description box. I'll put this all out away from it. Look at this. Gotta dry this octopus. So they do some they do other products as well, um, including PDFs where you don't get you don't get the supplies. Because if you've already got the equipment and you've got the got felt to use, you you don't need a kit, do you? So you can buy just the PDF of that one. I really love that octopus. Now, before I forget to mention, because it's the kind of thing I will forget to mention, um, they did give me a discount code for ten percent off. So I'll put the I'll put the code in the description box. So it's not ten percent. It won't give you ten percent off a subscription but it will give you ten percent off any kind of one-off purchase. So if you wanted to do a one-off box or any of their other products you want to you know it will give you 10% off your order and that's valid until the end of December let's make a start I've been meaning to get around to this all day and one thing and another has got in the way and it's now only about half an hour till I've got to go and get dinner ready if that <laughs> but I thought well I'll make a start and then I can come back and work on it some more afterwards so number one the wire frame take the two lengths of wire and twist one of each end one of each end around each other bend the wire in half so the doubled up part forms a rounded front okay now i've got to shape them either there's a template here somewhere i've got all these templates in the back okay well, i think this is going to be quite simple i won't uh, i won't take you all the way through this because they they do this is not meant to be a tutorial it's just a sort of taking you through my adventure a little bit so I'll I'll scoot through this and come back to you when I finish my shaping. I've got my my wire piece pretty much fit in the template not exactly they're all going to vary a little bit every every single person could be given the same kit and come up with a slightly different looking creature <laughs> and you can get some idea now of the size it's going to be and this is just the you know, this is just the kind of skeleton inside. Apparently, it's about 34 centimeters so long. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be quite a size. When I first sort of chose it, I said, Oh, I'd really love to have the Blue Well one, please. They let me choose which I wanted. Um, I kind of pictured it would sit in the palm of my hand. <laughs> Use a strand from your large amount of natural white core wool, that's this. Don't get it mixed up with the brilliant white wool, and begin wrapping the wire around the, wrapping the wool around the wire. As the wire has a textured surface, the wall should stay in place. Oh, that's interesting. It is, it's a sort of fine, twisted, kind of galvanised wire. Don't know if you're better. Uh, to get a strand of wool around the short tuft, find the grain of the wool and tease along it. You can also stretch the wool into a, into a strand by teasing it longer. Just pull gently. OK. Right, I'm going to carry on wrapping this round and I'll, I'll come back when I'm ready for the next bit. My half hour's up, it's time to go and get the dinner on, but I've managed to get this little skeleton kind of ready to go. I've left this last little bit here. Most of this I just wrapped around. Did a little bit of felting here and there. I'm using the coarsest needle, and they tell you to, with these eco-friendly felting mats, they tell you to put the two together, hessian sides together, and actually use them both as one, well, and they will felt together as you use them. And one of the great things is that when these are done with, and you don't need them anymore, you wear them out, you you can just uh, they're compostable which is fantastic so now i'm just using this coarsest needle just to roughly felt these pieces together and i'm making sure that i don't stab into the wire i'm just stabbing in between the wires and um, and it's nice that all the way through they say like here where is it? we have useful tutorials on youtube on how to wrap wool around wire if you need more help um i got in i got the hang of that pretty quickly so that was that was quite straightforward and I think what I've ended up with looks pretty much like what they've got in the picture 
take half of the leftover natural white core wool, the same as you used to wrap the wire, flatten into a sheet of 21 by 25 centimetres. This sheet is to be rolled into a sausage shape to fit inside the body loop. So it seems to be, yeah, begin winding the wool in from the long side all the way to the other end. Okay. <clears throat> felt down to secure still using your coarse needle and then continue shaping this to fit the looped body so in the end this sausage that I've just made has got to fit inside that bit and I'm just first of all just gonna roughly felt these felt this together in, into kind of a roll and then I will start I will keep going into it until I've got it into this into the right size and shape to fit inside there so I'm not going to record that because as I said before the makers YouTube channel has all the tutorials you could possibly need <laughs> I've made my little shape I've done quite a bit of um, needle felting all with the coarse needle um, and I think that will fit just nicely now within that frame that I've made And uh, what I say, this this uh, frame needs to come about halfway round to make sure that the the way it lands up 3D, not 2D. So that looks about right to me. So, once you have the right size fit inside the wire loop, remember to keep the wall body 3D. The wire needs to be just above the middle line, just above the middle line. Yeah, that looks about right to me. I'm actually quite surprised at how quickly this is coming together <clears throat> and I think part of that is that it's it's wool it's pure wool it felts really quickly and easily if you've ever, ever tried any of those um kind of cheapy kits which you know can, can be a good starting point I don't really like the ones where you you end up working into like a polystyrene ball or something I don't really enjoy that very much but sometimes they're like a, a wool acrylic mixture or just acrylic and they don't it just doesn't felt as easily whereas this um felt very very readily so um yeah it surprised me how quickly i've got to this point so what's next you can see how many photos they are and the instructions are really detailed Take two thirds of the remaining core wool and tease off generous strands. Begin wrapping the body with strands of wool to cover over the wire and the whole body shape. Note, later you'll be changing the overall shape of the wheel by stabbing more into the front. Your shape should still be soft now, because at the moment this is all quite soft. But as you stab into it more, it'll become firmer, won't it? I'm gonna work through all of this now and get to, hopefully get to this point this evening. And then I will come back and see you tomorrow when I'm ready to move on to the next bit and start adding some colours. <laughs> I've used up all of that core wool now and I've got my basic whale shape. I've checked it against the basic body template there. It's not bad, it's not perfect, but near enough. So now the idea is I'm going to go, I'm going to use my medium needle. I think I'm with the medium needle and I'm just going to start um, um, stabbing away to sort of firm everything up refine the shape a little bit certainly need to do some work here and this I'm I'm so surprised at how quickly this has come together for me so far because I'm I'm normally quite a slow worker so yeah really really happy with this if I can get to this point tonight and then come back tomorrow and start adding the colours I will be very happy bunny I just I even love the noise of it I find it very uh I'm listening to to Matthew Perry's book on Audible. That's really nice because he he's reading it himself as well. Okay, so I actually can't wait till tomorrow to carry on because <laughs> I'm really enjoying myself. So I've got my I've got my shape all done. That I've kind of flattened out the bottom a bit, following the, um, the the template there, and that's nice because that means it will it will stand up like that when it's all done. It will stand kind of like that to display it, which is nice. 
Um, it's all firmed up a bit now and I'm quite happy with the shape and everything and I've taken a pencil and used the guidelines so they're saying like a third of the way in and a third of the way down to put the up to mark the eyes I'll stick that right in there because that might tend to disappear in a minute um, and so the next thing is what they're calling colouring in so you'll now begin to colour in your, in your well in the striking blue wool and it is really striking. Split the 20 grams into half. Just goes to show how much it, that just looks such a lot, doesn't it? And it's only 20. If I just read 20 grams, I wouldn't be expecting it to look that much. <laughs> okay, split it into half and put half to one side for now. Okay, that's about half. Take a wisp of the other half and twist into a strand. So just a wisp. Twist into a strand. Begin making a ring around the pencil marked eye. Felt the end down with your medium felting needle. The ring should measure about two centimeters and you'll be using your medium felting needle. I feel like that's too thick. Okay. So medium felting needle is the one bit orange. Okay. Okay. So it's about that. It's about that. And they've got it more sort of elongated. So about two centimeters. Yeah, it's not far off, that'll do. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna do the other side then. Right. So I'm gonna do the other side to match and then I'm gonna looks like I'm running a whole line along from here to here, down the other side, meet them at the front and then I'm going to start colouring in the whole of the top with this beautiful blue. Take small pinches of the same wool and begin colouring in the top of the well starting at the front and going towards the tail. Make sure to felt the wool down in the from the front to the back direction. Yeah can see why that would make sense. Still using the medium felting needle. Continue to colour in the well top remembering to use small pinches and working in small increments all the way towards the tail end leaving the inner eye circle white. You're not building bulk but only felting down a solid blue covering. It's essential that the blue makes a crisp difference to the white. Okay this will be really new for me to do this. To neaten the line stab with your medium needle into the space between the two colours. That's a handy tip. I'm just going to follow that along and um, come back and show you the next stage. God, this is just an absolute joy to do, I tell you. It really is. I finished putting my line in. He's definitely got a, a good side and a <laughs> not so good side, I think. <laughs> um, it was really interesting, that little tip about to get to make a cleaner line, just to go into the space between the two colours to neaten up the line. That worked really well. It's a really handy tip that. So now I've got to start the whole colouring in thing, taking little pinches of the of the wool and um, I'm colouring the whole of this top half is going to be the, the, this beautiful blue and I'm laying the wool down in the direction in in that direction and felting it down in that direction going towards the tail and using my medium needle front to back direction so rightly or wrongly I tend to sort of stab it all the way along just to tack it down and then um, and then I'll work into it a bit more until it's all nice and smooth. And like I said, I'm not supposed to be adding bulk here. I'm just, 
I'm just adding colour. So I'm spreading out thinly like this beautiful blue. It's absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so I'm just going to cover the whole of that, um, the back right up to the tail where they show the tail there. I'm just going to sit and carry on there. Uh, carry on listening to my book. I can't stop now. It's a very therapeutic process. It's really enjoying it. <laughs> Having a lovely time. Well, it's uh, it's the next morning. I have literally just jumped out the shower and come straight to my craft room because I can't wait to carry on with my well. I was so happy with it. When I went to bed last night, I was so happy with where I'd left it. Let me show you. <laughs> this is where we're at so far. I'm so pleased with it. It looks just like the picture, only just slightly different. So let's go to the desk and I'll carry on. I keep saying this isn't by any means meant to be a tutorial. You can go to um, the maker's um, own YouTube channel for all the tutorials you need. This is just sort of sharing my my journey and how I get on with it. I must say the instructions have been brilliant. I haven't even had to go and look at a video or anything. It's all been pretty self-explanatory and I'm learning lots along the way and I'm sure after doing a couple of, of their kits I'm going to start wanting to create my own creatures because this is giving me all the skills you know. Step 40 see there's lots and lots of steps lots and lots of photos so step 40 your, your well should now look like this and it does. <laughs> that that was that was the ugly side before but I think now this has turned into the ugly side but there's a long way to go yet so so now we're gonna yeah we're gonna put the body to one side I'm gonna start making side fins so Take the half of the blue, I think this was the half, I think that's what I've got left over. That's the blue ball that you split off in step 31. Split this into two again and put one half to one side for later. Tail and eyes, etc. One thing I, I do know is that you don't ever, you never cut, you never cut this in half, you, you pull it apart. So you split this in two again, now split the remaining half into two, one for each fin. It's a bit like when you're using clay as well, isn't it? If you need two, two similarly shaped objects, you start off with the same size ball of clay, and this is the same. I think that feels about half that. Maybe it feels slightly, slightly plumper. I don't know. It feels about right. And flatten one half into a flat sheet of seven by sixteen centimeters. Okay, there's my side fin. This is this shape I'm aiming at, and these I think indicate the kind of wispy ends. Bit of artistic license here anyway. <laughs> Ooh, ouch. Do you know, that's the first time I've stabbed myself through this whole process. Not bad actually. Tell you what, I've written instructions and done diagrams for things before. And uh, it's not it's not an easy it's not an easy task actually. Um, so I'm always impressed when instructions are as good as these are. Okay, so I'm going to keep on working into this. Keep um, working on my outline. What she's saying now is to start around the the tip of the fin and then work work your way around. Um, I'm going to get my multi-needle tool out because that will make it faster but yeah it's just going to take me a little while just to get this into shape until I've got it the shape I've got the shape and size that I've got here I'm going to be leaving those ends wispy like she said so I will come back when I've done that and I've got, I'll get my needle multi-needle tool out I've now got my little multi-needle tool out so this is a tool that has five needles in it um, so you basically when you use it you're using five needles all at once so it really speeds up the process when you get to the point of wanting to sort of smooth everything out it's got a lock and unlock function so um, if I lock it if I turn it this way it locks it so this tube doesn't go up and down I'm not going to stab myself by accident when I pick it up but when I unlock it I can do this so I can just it's making pretty short work of that so I'm quite happy with the shape that I've got now it's a bit bigger than than this one it's slightly different shape but I think that's fine I'm gonna try and just this is quite a lot wider I'm gonna just fold this under as I go to make that a little bit narrower and thicker at this end and I'm supposed to leave the end this these bits wispy and I guess that's because that's where I'll be joining them to the body in a bit 
I also got these out just to show you. <laughs> these are these kind of faux leather finger stools. Put on the other hand to the one you're using the needle with <laughs> to prevent you, so you can hold pieces. Sometimes, especially if it's it's something that you really have to hold in place while you stab, it's not a bad idea to do that. Although, as I said just now, I've only stabbed myself once during this whole process. So I just uh, I just wanted to quickly show you that, and I'm going to carry on working away now. Do the other fin to match, and then I think I'm on the tail fins next. So I'm going to carry on working through now and make the other one of these side fins and the tail fin. And when I come to the point of doing something different, I'll come back to you. I think the eyes is going to be the next thing that's significantly different. And I'm really looking forward to doing the eyes. Really looking forward to that bit. But I'm going to carry on and work through my fins first. Back to my audio book. See, they always ended up looking slightly weird and manic or... <laughs> We used to call it our weird menagerie. Yep, that's another one for the menagerie. <laughs> I think at one point we took a photo of some of the creatures that we'd all we'd all made. <laughs> what a motley bunch. I'm gonna call that okay. <laughs> so now I'm going on to another colour I haven't used yet, the blue. Two small, same size, light blue wisps. Repeat the process with a white wall using your fine needle again, but this time make a slightly smaller disc. So I'm going to do, I'm going to make a slightly smaller disc inside with the blue, and then another slightly smaller disc inside with the black. And then I'm going to add a tiny bit of the white and add this kind of, you know, it's the white of the eye or the or the highlight. Right, I've um, I've made my eyes. They don't look quite like the picture, but I think you know it's fine for them to be a little bit different. They don't look exactly like each other, but near enough. So now it's the eyelids. So I'm going, going back to the dark blue and then I need two small pinches for each eye for the upper and lower lids of each eye. They're all roughly the same. Take one portion, fold in half and felt down the bent edge and just below using your fine felting needle. Keep the other ends wispy and unfelted. Fold it like that. Leave these ends all wispy. So I'll do a little bit more work on that. I'll make four like that. And then I think the idea is that they'll fit over the eye like this and where all the wispy ends are, that's where I will felt it into, into the body. <laughs> this is going to be so cute. Okay, I'm going to carry on working on that. I'll be back in the moment. Right, that's my that's my eyelids done. <laughs> He's getting a little bit of an evil look now. <laughs> well, slightly smug. I've got a smug whale. Use the brilliant white wool and lay thin wisps over the curved outward edge. Felt the wall down with your fine felting needle to blend into the blue. It's just kind of like shading it really, isn't it? Pretty. Very pretty. I've never done anything like this before with felting. I think my felting experience is pretty basic. <laughs> I wouldn't call myself a beginner, but um, I'm certainly not. Certainly not an expert. <laughs> Do better with this now. So I'll do that with each of the fins and then I'll come to attach it. I'm going to attach it about here and again we've left the wispy bits here will be what I attach it to the body with. Okay, done that bit. I'm so pleased with this. So happy with it. It's going really well. And it's all just come together so easily. It doesn't look exactly like the one in the picture, but then I don't, didn't really want it to, you know, it's got to be my own. Okay, so the next stage is the underbelly. So you apparently use the whole rest of the white. I'm going to kind of leave it in that shape, I think. And, um, and you kind of shape it, you needle felt it first to sort of shape it. Felt it down into a rough shape to fit the underneath of the whale. Make sure it covers all of the undercarriage. Don't flatten, don't flatten it. Okay, so if anything, I want it a little bigger than this kind of undercarriage. And, and then I'll tack it down all around the sides again and 
start attaching it but I've got a little mustn't flatten it okay you to start felting into the edge of the soft white shape to attach to the whale adjacent to the blue top so I'm going to go whoops all the way around the edges just my coarse needle for now and just follow along this line here I think that's what it's meaning I might just do the ends first a minute Hang on. continue with the shaping all around so that all of the white wool has been firmed up and shrunk down right so I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I will come back when I'm ready to start these belly folds which will be another new thing to learn it's also yeah what a little adventure this has been I'm having a lovely time I keep saying it it's true okay back in a bit right I've finished doing that he's ended up with a bit of an undershot jaw but I don't mind <laughs> he's got his own personality my whale <laughs> So now I'm going to start putting the um, the belly folds. <clears throat> so use a light blue wool, tease enough off to make a thin strand to reach from the front to the back of the whale. And then you lay the strand all the way along there and felt down firmly in a line using your coarse felting needle. So, mm, instructions are so good. So I'm going to make a long thin strand that runs all the way along there and then felt it down with my come on back to my coarse needle it looks like I'm gonna make more lines working away from the middle to the sides but keep the pattern symmetrical so I end up with something like that oh quite a lot of lines then I'll start this end and work along okay right I keep working on these lines, I'll be back again. I'm back back and forth like a fiddler's elbow. Right, I've done my belly folds. <laughs> I'm not sure if I've done them how they're meant to look actually. I think I've maybe made my lines a little bit thick. So what I might do is go back over with a with a needle again and re re go along all of these lines narrow them down a bit make them a bit deeper just take my time with it but I'm definitely getting there so um, I need to go off and uh, sort dinner out now and then <laughs> I love my whale and then um, I get to do the sparkly bit next <laughs> give me a sparkly top coat um, yeah sparkly top cover tease fine wispy strands lay them down blah 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 so just basically Give them a top coat over the back and a little bit on the fins and tail. Now the beads, use a tiny dab of glue for each bead. Place the bead onto the glue. Work on the fins first and leave to dry or sew into place. Okay, so but that will be the last bit. Um, so I'm going to start off with this, then put my beads, and then I will come back and show you my finished whale. I am absolutely thrilled to bits with him at the moment. <laughs> I can't tell you how chuffed I am with that. I keep trying, don't I? <laughs> okay. See you in a minute, one last go. Did it again. Wittering away to myself without pressing record. Okay, so <laughs> I think I'm all done with my well now. I'm absolutely thrilled to bits with it. I love how this um, sort of shimmery thread looks, this shimmery fibre looks. I'm going to take some photos because I don't think it's really looking as good on camera as it does in real life. Um, I love is he's just got his own personality with his undershot jaw. <laughs> I love him. I love him. I'm sort of bits. You're supposed to put um, some of the larger beads on the bottom here to look more like kind of barnacles. Love this tech. Love the feel of this. I love the look and the texture of this. And you're supposed to put beads on the the smaller beads on the fins and and across the body. But I've just done a mixture of the larger and smaller beads there. Um, I've either just dropped them on with glue or with the larger ones I've just done a couple of pokes of the needle to make a small hole drop the glue in there and yeah I, I've decided I, I, I just I feel like I don't want to put the beads all over and um, so I'm gonna leave it at that now um, as I say I'll, I'll try and take some photos and I will share them in the Facebook group and uh, and discord not something I thought I could do really it's better than anything else I've ever felted I'm 
I'm just really impressed with the materials and the instructions and but yeah I'm I'm absolutely I, I love my whale <laughs> I've had a great time making him I've learnt a lot I think I'm going to learn so much from doing each of these boxes and uh, yeah can't wait to try the next one can't wait to get my cat kit my, my craft along my charity craft along cat kit as well thank you so much again to Steffi and her team for giving me the chance to try this brilliant <laughs> box I've had an absolute blast making it. Don't forget, there's that 10% discount code that you can use off, off a one-off purchase. You can't use it um, against a subscription because that's like a recurring payment, but you can use it against any any other uh, products across their website. And it's valid until the 31st of December. So I hope you enjoyed sharing my little felting adventure with me. Thank you very much for joining me today and I will see you again really soon. Bye.